hello friends so today i'll be talking on this training series uh, ct severity grading in traumatic brain injury so it's a very important topic for all the trainees and many a times we ask this question and very many times it surprises that not many would be knowing uh, so i wish to acknowledge my colleague dr amrita who helped me develop this content so there are around four types of ct gradings i'm sure most of the trainees at least may have heard of the first one which came which is the marshall's uh, grading that is the commonest one which we have used but after that there are uh, three more newer gradings that have happened uh, named after cities rotterdam is one then helsinki and stockholm so these are the different gradings that have evolved but uh, the one which possibly we tend to remember and much more easy to relate is the marshall's grading which came first so marshall's classification the grading of the ct in this is only traumatic brain injury is graded from 1 to 6 grading so marshall's grading and even rotterdam you have 6 rating and uh, you have helsinki which is graded up to 14 so marshall grading is 1 to 6 and six grading is worse. So grade one is a mild traumatic brain injury. If someone has a six grading, it is worse prognosis. So any of these grades, they have tried to correlate with the mortality. So when you look at the grade one, it's pretty much like a normal CT scan. As you see, there is no midline shift. If you see this CT scan, there's no midline shift that is absent. And you can see all the systems that are present. All these are the basal systems, the black mustache sort of a thing. So the systems are not effaced and uh, they are not compressed also. So it is present and there is no evacuable lesion or there is no hematomas of any sort. So they call it as high and mixed density lesions are absent in grade one. So grade one pretty much looks normal. Uh, so the key thing for all trainees to remember is all these gradings are based out of the systems, whether they are present or whether they're compressed or whether absent. And most of the gradings take into account the presence or absence of the midline shift. And most of the gradings look into any evacuable lesions or hematoma. So be it subdural hematoma, epidural hematoma, intraventricular hemorrhage or subarachnoid hemorrhage. They take the, these are the three components. So I don't expect any trainees to remember exactly what is grade one, grade two in all these classifications. But at least remember the domains or the components in each of these grading. So this is Marshall grade one. So grade two, if you see here, there is a small sort of a lesion or a hematoma. So midline shift, as you see, there is some midline shift. So the reference for any of this grading takes midline shift as less than five millimeter and more than five millimeter. Here you see the midline shift is zero to five millimeter. And you, you can see all the systems, basal systems are present. They are not compressed, they're not absent. So it is all present. And you have a high mixed density lesion. So you have this hematoma here present or a intracranial hemorrhage, uh, which is present. But if you see, it is a very small sort of a hemorrhage and the volume is quantified as less than 25 and more than 25 for all the classifications. Here you see a hemorrhage which is present, which is less than 25 cc. So this is grade two. Then you have this grade three. So if you look at this grade three, midline shift, as you see, is again zero to five. So there's no huge midline shift. And if you see systems compared to the grade one and grade two, that mustache sign or uh, the systems you see is compressed. See here you see it is present, but it is fully compressed. Sometimes it can be absent also. And you have here also you can have high mixed density lesion, which is less than 25 ml or 25 cc. So this is grade three. And in grade three, there can be diffuse swelling of the brain. So this is grade four. So grade four, as you see, you have a midline shift more than five millimeter. So that is the key thing. So you have midline shift more than five millimeter and basal systems you cannot see here. So they are fully absent and many times it will be absent or compressed. So the typical patients who come to ICU will possibly range from grade three. Uh, so this is grade four where possibly they'll need intervention. But here again, high mixed density lesion can be more than 25 cc. So that is grade four. So where you have an evacuable hematoma, which is more than 25 cc. So grade five is where there is a lot of hemorrhagic contusions and uh, which, uh, which is not evacuated. So as you see, there's a lot of hemorrhages which, which cannot be evacuated. 
grade 6 is who have undergone some sort of a surgical evacuation of the lesion or decompressive surgery so where there was a surgery performed to evacuate the lesions come under grade 6 so this is the marshall's classification so for all the trades just remember all these classifications are based out of three to four domains one is the midline shift the second thing is cisterns the fourth thing is evacuable hematoma and the other things will follow later that is, if you have a hematoma which cannot be evacuated or the sixth one which is where there is evacuation of hematoma that is happened. So, and these have correlation with the mortality. So, grade one, uh, the studies have found with Marshall classification, mortality is zero. With grade two also, mortality is zero. So, the mortality starts from grade three where systems gets a little compressed and midline shift tends to happen. So, mortality is up to 40%. Surprisingly, grade four, the mortality is found to be zero in one of the study. Grade 5, it is 18.79 and grade 6 uh, is very high mortality. So, this was one of the study which has correlated the mortality as per the Marshall grading. So, that is about Marshall, which is the oldest, which many of the trainees possibly remember. So, we we'll look into the other newer classifications. The second one is Rotterdam classification, named after obviously a city from Netherlands. So here again, if you look, the domains, they have just stratified the domains and they have put the scoring. So again, it is 0 to 6 grading. So the first sort of a domain they take is the basal systems. So if it is normal, score is 0. If it is compressed, it is 1. If it is absent, the score is 2. This is based on basal systems. Then they take the midline shift. If midline shift is absent or less than 5 millimeter, 0, more than 5 millimeter is 1. So it's very easy to remember. They take different domains. So, what are the domains I said? It's the cisterns, it's the midline shift and the evacuable hematoma. So, obviously, the third one will be the hematoma. So, they looked at epidural mass, absent 0, present 1. Then the fourth component, which is an additional, is intraventricular hemorrhage or subarachnoid hemorrhage. If it is absent 0, present 1. So, very simple. So, I personally feel this Rotterdam is very easy to remember and it is nicely stratified. Basal systems, midline shift and hematoma and sub intraventricular bleed. So, this, here again, they have correlated with mortality. As you saw, Marshall was little hodgepodge because the grade 4 did not have any mortality. But here you have a sequential correlation to the higher scores and the mortality. Score 1 is 0, score 2 is 7%, score 3, they had 16%, score 4, 26, and score 5, 53. And so, it's very nice sequential increase in mortality keeping in with the increase in the grading. This we did not see in the Marshall's grading. So I personally believe this Rotterdam is a better score for most trainees to remember and, he, and, it, and it has a better correlation with the mortality also, which is in a sequential way, higher the score, higher the mortality. So much easier for all of us to remember. So this is something which possibly uh, most trainees can remember. Then you have this Helsinki CT score, which, which has taken components from the Marshall score and from the Rotterdam score. So it is a combination. It has taken few components from Marshall and Rotterdam. So here, if you see pictorially, so they take hem hematomas as the criteria. So this is a subdural hematoma. They give a score of 2. Then intracranial hematoma, they give a score of 2. And they give a score of 3 to epidural hematoma. So, epidural gets a higher score. In addition to this, if they have intraventricular hemorrhage, so this is the intraventricular, it gets a grading of 3. And if the hematoma is larger than 25 centimeter cube, it gets a rating of 2. So, it takes a combination of these 3. Along with this, it adds on the basal system. So, again, same basal system 0, uh, normal 0, compressed 1. In Rotterdam, you saw... If it is absent, it gave 2. Here, they give much higher score. They gave 5. If uh, basal systems are absent, it, it adds in another 4 to it. So, there is a total score of 5. That's why the Marshall score and Rotterdam, you have 1 to 6 score. Here, the score is from 3 to 14. So, this is the sum score. So, so Helsinki, they have basically taken combination of Marshall and Rotterdam. So, it's a more of combination. The score is 3 to 14. So, uh, I'll tell you, uh, the studies have shown that Helsinki and Stockholm has a better predictive. Obviously, it will have better predictive because it has taken more components. So, that's all it is. But I think the simpler one for all of us to remember is possibly the Rotterdam. So, this is the Helsinki CT. Then you have this Stockholm CT score, which is possibly the later version. 
uh, where the midline shift is taken as a continuous variable and the score is called TSAH score, subarachnoid hemorrhage score, I suppose. And this is the only score, the only distinct advantage is it factors in diffuse axonal injury, which none of the other scores take into consideration. So here it is interesting. So they took, they look at uh, where all the hemorrhage has happened, subarachnoid hemorrhage. So if the subarachnoid hemorrhage present in the convexities, basically the hemorrhages that are present in the convexities, they take and they take as one domain and they look at midline shift one to five millimeter, they put a score of one and midline shift of more than five millimeter, they give a score of two. Okay, So they look at hemorrhages that are, that are in the convexities. This they add, this is an additive score. So this they add it with hemorrhages present in the basal system. So basal system hemorrhage with midline shift one to five, they take as one and midline shift more than five, they take as two. So they add all these scores. They look at hemorrhages in the convexities which are present in the peripheries. They look at hemorrhages which are present in the systems. Along with, they take the hemorrhage present in the intraventricular, uh, in, in, uh, in, within the systems, the hemorrhage present or intraventricular hemorrhage, the, uh, the blood that is there, along with diffuse axonal injury. So they add up all these and they quantify. And it is shown that the outcome prediction was much better with Helsinki and Stockholm. So this is about the Stockholm score. So basically right now, the, to summarily to say, there are four scores. So Marshall is the oldest score. But as I said, the easier one for all of us to remember is the Rotterdam, which looks into midline shift, which looks into the cisterns and uh, hematomas present and intraventricular hemorrhage. And the evolution after this has, is the Helsinki. And Helsinki focuses more on the hemorrhage components, whether it is epidural, subdural, or intraventricular hemorrhage, along with the cisternal compressions, vessel systems, and the score is 3 to 14. Stockholm is a little uh, more refined version where it looks into the hemorrhages in the periphery, hemorrhages in the systems, and the intraventricular hemorrhage with diffuse axonal injury. And it is shown Helsinki and Stockholm uh, with regards to evidence perform better as compared to the other two. So that's about it. So it's a useful topic for all the trainees. At least remember the names of the four scoring tools that are present and the domains that are involved in each of these scoring. So thank you one and all. So you can visit my website www.drpadiprangappa.com to rehab to this lecture. So end with this beautiful quote by Albert Einstein. Science is a wonderful thing. If one does not have to earn one's living at So thank you one and all.